Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. As you see on your screen, it is time for our No Surrender pay-per-view in our TNA series. Super excited for this show as we are going to find out the winner of the 2014 Bound for Glory series. We are also going to find out if Kurt Angle is going to be getting a shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship this coming Thursday after his match with Samoa Joe. Uh, later on in the night, we are going to have a Monsters Ball match featuring Abyss versus Jeff Hardy one-on-one -on -one, and a whole lot more action happening. We, uh, yeah, we have a hell of a show ahead of us. The final stop, as they always say, um, before Bound for Glory, which is setting up to be one hell of a show. And the only way to find out what happens on this final stop before Bound for Glory is to dive into the action. We open up with a pre-show bout. Features April Mendez defeating Jesse McKay in 833 by pinfall with a, sl a Slicid a bread number two. I keep forgetting to change that. Uh, 47 rating for the match. Not too bad there. Um, Mendez getting another victory in the knockout submission as she works her way up the ladder. Going to be uh, taking on some some opponents here soon that have had a bit more TV time and all that, so I'll be something to keep an eye out for. But she does get a victory here over Jesse uh, over Jesse McKay in a dark match before the show. Thirty eight thousand people, thirty eight thousand five hundred forty four people. That is in the Alamo Dome. We'll see you in the Alamo Dome. Yeah, you know the the bit from TNA. Anyway, um, yeah, forty seven rating for that match. There, we move on from that to a fifty two rated matchup in which Jay Lethal defeats Robbie E in nine hundred three by pinfall to flying elbow drop. Uh, fifty two, like I said, fifty seven from Lethal, thirty two from Robbie E. Um, these matches were kind of brought about. Mostly just because, well, Mendez is still doing her her uh, story where she's going through the knockouts division. Um, but these were also kind of brought about because of what we saw recently on Impact where we saw that Mendez and Lethal wanted to start having each other's backs. So they were at ringside for each other's matches here tonight. Um, granted, Mendez was kind of selling a little bit from her match, but she was still at ringside for Jay Lethal's match, however, and had some success on both ends. So we'll have to see if uh, this ends up being more of a permanent partnership heading forward or not. Nevertheless, we open up the main focused portion of the show with a brief 64-rated video package kind of highlighting the four men in the Bound for Glory series that will be competing tonight to determine the overall winner, Johnny Impact, Chris Saban, Bobby Roode, James Storm. We also get a little bit of uh, video about Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe's recent issues, as well as Abyss and Jeff Hardy's. Um, also kind of helps highlight a few other things as well, but of course I couldn't get it all in, in this. Um, kind of helps highlight the DJZ and Brian Kendrick title matchup here tonight. Kind of goes over, um, kind of shows brief little snippets of Daniel uh, talking to Homicide and Loki and everything else has been happening in TNA recently. We open up after that with our first of our two semifinal matches in the Bound for Glory series. In a 73 rated matchup, Johnny Impact defeats James Storm in 11 18 by pinfall with a Starship Pain to move on to the finals later in the night. 73 rating for the match, 70 from Impact, 67 from Storm. Really good match there to open up the show. And Johnny Impact moves on. James Storm tried to do what he could to to uh, get the victory here and pull off the quote-unquote upset. But Johnny Impact, too talented on this evening, too focused on getting the title shot bound for glory, and has uh, pulled off the victory here. After that, we get our second of our two semifinal matches, which features Chris Sabin getting the victory over Bobby Roode in 1039 by pinball to Cradle Shock. Gets a 75 rating for that. Let's go. 
Uh, 64 for Bobby Roode, who seemed off his game. He's been off his game recently a lot. Uh, 70 from Chris Saban. So the finals is officially set to be uh, Johnny Impact and Chris Saban. The winner of that will be the winner of the Bound for Glory series. So that's going to be crazy for sure. I have it switched over right now because I don't want to give away anything. Um, but I'm adjusting that because, like I said, uh, it was a um, this was a uh, 100% you know uh, game chose the winner. So I have to go in and edit the uh, the finals because, of course, I didn't have I just put the match there as the finals. However, I didn't actually put who was actually you know, I didn't put the actual winners in there because I didn't know about it until just then. So both members of Beer Money tried to get the victory, but both of them failed. So we'll have to see what that ends up happening with that when it comes to Team Dixie because Team Dixie officially had two members in the Final Four and both of them lost in the semifinals. So may end up uh, may end up being some frustration when it comes to Team Dixie. But we move on from that to a promo with Magnus who seems a little upset about what he just saw. He was watching the video screen or uh, the video screen. He was watching the TV backstage and seems a little upset about what he just saw with Bobby Roode losing. Uh, but uh, he's talking to Samoa Joe and says that he wants Joe to be very clear and understanding about what his job is tonight. His job is that no matter what, at the end of the day, Magnus ca- or Magnus, sorry, um, at the end of the night, Kurt Angle cannot be victorious. He doesn't care if he has to figure out some way to get disqualified in that or to uh, get Kurt Angle disqualified in that match. He doesn't care if he has to put Kurt Angle back on the shelf with an injury. He needs to make sure that Samoa Joe prevents Kurt Angle from winning tonight because Kurt Angle cannot have a shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And if Samoa Joe wants to continue to prove that he's worth the money that he's being paid by Magnus and continue to prove that he's worth being the number one contender for the championship, then he needs to prove it here tonight against jo- against Angle. And Joe just kind of stands there, doesn't really say a word, and then just walks off. So Joe seems focused, but... Is he going to be able to get the job done against Kurt Angle tonight? Only time will tell. After that, we get our one of two knockouts division matches tonight in which Angelina Love defeats Katarina in 921 by pinfall with a lights out. Gets a 51 rating as uh, this story kind of comes to an end by Katarina finally Kettering and Angelina Love finally going at it, and Angelina Love getting the victory. 51 rating there, 48 from Love, 42 from Kettering, who was really off her game. Um, Velvet Sky came down during the match, or not, she didn't come down during the match, but she came out um, onto the stage during the matchup. She wasn't supposed to necessarily be labeled as being at ringside with Angelina Love, but that's what it is. Anyway, um, she came out towards the end of the match and was on the stage kind of watching the ending, which featured Love picking up the victory. Afterwards, um, Love kind of celebrates while noticing. Uh, she is selling, obviously, but she do- she notices Sky and, and Tess Mocker up on the stage at this point because she didn't realize that they came out until just now. Um, and they just kind of look on, not really showing any emotion either way. Well, Tess Mocker is still kind of showing a conflicted look on her face, but Sky doesn't really show any emotion on her face either way as uh, she kind of watches on for a few seconds and then turns around and leaves with uh, Love kind of, you know, selling whatever damage she got from the matchup, but also kind of celebrating the fact that she got the victory. After that, in about the head, good heat and decent wrestling, 75 rating. Uh, Team 3D defeats EC3 and Rockstar Spud in 743 when Bully Ray pinned Rockstar Spud with the Bully Cutter. Bully carried the matchup, to be expected. Uh, but, yeah, 75 rating there. As EC3 and Rockstar Spud could not get it done against Team 3D. Bully Ray able to get a little bit of revenge. He wasn't 
he didn't pin e pin or make EC3 submit in this, but he did. Uh, he was able to get a victory in a tag team matchup, so he gets a little bit of revenge against uh, EC3 for the issues earlier in the summer, and uh, kind of takes it to him at this point, and also gets a victory over Team Dixie. You know, at this point, Team Dixie's heading into tonight, and they're supposed to be focused. They're supposed to be determined, and James Storm lost. Bobby Roode lost. Now EC3 and Rockstar Spud is lost. It's not looking good. It's not looking good for Team Dixie, who continue to have issues. Um, we've got three more matches on the on the books for them tonight. Mickey uh, Mickey's Knockouts title defense, and then Abyss's Monster Ball match, and Samoa Joe's big submission main event. So we'll have to see uh, how the rest of the night plays out for him. After that, we get a brief little promo, for, uh, pre-match interview from uh, DJZ, our X Division champion, who says that he is focused and ready to cross off another name, cross another name off the list of uh, people that he has defeated with the X Division championship on the line to prove that he is the greatest X Division champion in history. Gets a 46 rating because Borash was involved, but it is what it is. After that, we get the match itself. Which gets a 71. Holy crap. <laughs> they have great chemistry with each other. So that's good to know. Um, right as I'm ending this storyline. But in a decent matchup, DJ Z defeats Brian Kendrick in 1054 by pinfall with the Bible Black to make defense number two of the X Division Championship. 71 rating, 65 from DJ Z, 58 from Kendrick. Uh, DJ Z getting the victory, retaining the championship, proving that he can fight back the challenge of a crafty veteran like Brian Kendrick, and now he is going to be heading into Bound for Glory with the X-Division Championship still on the shoulder. We'll have to see who ends up being his challenger for that. But a uh, big victory for DJZ and a really good matchup. After that, we get our six-person or six-man tag match in which Christopher Daniels and Black Friday management defeat the Menagerie in 655 when Daniels pinned the Freak with the last right, 67 rating for the match. Um, kind of one-sided-ish, but it was to be expected as well. I mean, Black Friday management are, you know, mid, to, kind of upper, upper mid to mid uh, tier here in TNA. In fact, Homicide was, you know, just in the Bound for Glory series and finished decently, kind of middle of the pack. Daniels is obviously one of the better performers still in the company at this point, so they were going to kind of make short work of the menagerie, um, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. But uh, yeah, Daniels and Black Friday Management get the victory. All three men teamed up pretty well tonight, so it's kind of more trying, you know, kind of more... Uh, more evidence towards Black Friday management trying to recruit Daniels and, and convincing him that it would be a good idea for him to work together with them. I'm going to go with from there. After that, we prepare for our knockouts title matchup, but we see Gail Kim and Madison Rain getting ready to go to ringside as they said they were going to have ODBs back and make sure that Mickey James... Uh, didn't have anybody to come out and help her out, knowing that Team Dixie would be sending anybody and everybody out at this point. And Bischoff stops them and says, listen, ladies, I can't have you guys at ringside. We've got to have this match be fair, clean, you know, one woman defeating the other. But don't worry, it's going to be the same for both sides. In fact, I'm officially banning anybody from showing up at ringside for this matchup. And if anybody other than the two the two knockouts and the referee get involved in this matchup at all, then they will be suspended indefinitely. So he's putting his foot down, making sure no shenanigans happens, that somebody has to defeat somebody here tonight. No disqualifications, no countouts. Must be a winner in this matchup. And the match gets a 69. Nice. In a decent matchup, Mickey James defeats ODB in 1036 by pinfall to Mickey DT, making it defense number five of the TNA Knockouts Championship. 63 from ODB, 52 from Mickey James. Holy crap. Why was it that much of a difference in 
or in ring performances. That's kind of crazy. Why did ODB do so well and Mickey do so badly? She was penalized for inconsistency, so it's I don't know what happened there. She really had an off night, apparently, but she retains the championship and heads into Bound for Glory with the cha- with the uh, title stall in her possession. We'll have to see if she can hold it up till Bound for Glory, and if so, who her challenger is going to be for that belt at the at the uh, pay per view. Nevertheless, big victory for for uh, Mickey James here, getting the win over a tough challenger in ODB, and we'll have to see where she, where things go from there. After that, the tag team champions, American Wolves, come out, and they are awaiting the open challenge that they issued recently. When uh, Colt Cabana and E in uh, EY Eric Young, um, they come out to accept the challenge. Of course. They have been a tag team kind of off and on for a few months now. Kind of had uh, not hadn't really worked together as much in the ring um, lately because of Eric Young being part of the Bound for Glory series. But now that that is done and over with, EY can go back to teaming up with Cabana, and they're getting a shot at the belts right now. That match gets an an eighty. Holy crap! <laughs> What what is going on with tonight? <laughs> An 80 rating for the tag team title match, which ends up being a barn burner as the Wolves retain over Cabana and EY when Eddie Edwards gets Colt Cabana to submit to an Achilles lock. Wolves make defense number six of the tag team titles. 80 rating for the matchup. The Wolves just really killing it right now in the ring. Um, Cabana and Eric Young putting up a pretty decent effort, but could not get the job done against the Wolves, who are just continuing to prove that they are the top tag team in TNA right now. Proving it for sure. 80 rating, though. So they definitely... They didn't steal the show because we're still partway through the show, but they stole the show so far. After that, we get a little bit of a video hyping up Abyss and Jeff Hardy. This is a little more detailed than the opening package for the pay-per-view. Goes over... uh, Jeff Hardy's injury at the hands of Abyss goes over Abyss's recent issues with Samoa Joe and um, everything else going on. Jeff Hardy's big return. Kind of everything that built up to this Monsters Ball match. And the match itself gets a 71. That's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I don't know why it didn't necessarily list that it was a Monsters Ball match because it was. Uh, I mean, this says that the aim was hardcore, but it was a Monsters Ball match. Nevertheless, in about that had great heat and good wrestling, Abyss gets the victory over Jeff Hardy in 955 by pinfall with a black hole slam. Um, so Jeff Hardy unable to get the victory in the matchup as Abyss was able to get the victory in the Monsters Ball match. 71 rating. Abyss with the 66, Jeff Hardy with the 70. And uh, yeah. Abyss, uh, Jeff Hardy maybe still kind of injured. Maybe still couldn't, you know, tried to go for some stuff towards the end of the match and, and was clearly still kind of selling some stuff. And that's when Abyss was able to take advantage. Hit the black hole slam onto some, uh, we'll say onto some chairs that were stacked down there or something. Actually, it's Abyss in a Monsters Ball match, so more than likely it was some tax that was laid out. But, uh, yeah, Abyss getting the victory and, uh, you know, pretty successful victory here too he was able to thwart the attempt of jeff hardy getting revenge for the attack so kind of a big deal there not only for him but also for team dixie team dixie you know mickey james retained the her championship and now abyss gets a victory here it's kind of a big deal um team dixie kind of turned around here towards the end of the night but abyss getting the victory jeff hardy we'll have to see where things are go for him maybe i mean to be fair maybe these two aren't done yet maybe jeff's going to come you can come back and, and try to fight some more with him, but we will have to see how it all plays out from there. After that, we get a brief little segment here where it basically just shows Abyss and Jeff Hardy being checked on by medical staff. Um, Jeff's being checked on about the you know the fact that he's still laid out, kind of selling the black hole slam, really uh, hurt from everything. Abyss... Uh, has a busted open forearm from various weapon weaponry weapon weaponry i guess that works um 
various weaponry being used on it, so he's getting his arm checked out and all that. Just kind of checking on them at, after the Monsters Ball match. Then after that, oh, well, I guess. I guess that worked. Um, in our finals for the Bound for Glory series, Johnny Impact defeats Chris Saban in 1356 by pinfall with a Moonlight Drive. And the man who took the lead partway through the series kept a demanding lead throughout the last, the second half of it is the one who goes on to win the whole goddamn thing. Johnny Impact is your winner of the 2014 Bound for Glory series. And he is the one who will be going on to challenge the TNA World's Heavyweight Champion at Bound for Glory. It is going to be a hell of a matchup, whoever he's in the ring with. He still gets a 75 still gets a 75 rating with the matchup even with the fact that they don't seem to click and made for an awkward bout 68 from impact 62 from Saban very impressive attempt for Saban to try to pull off the victory but at the end of the day Johnny Impact proven that he is the superstar that he is proven that he is Mr. Impact himself goes and gets the victory and now goes on to bound for glory to challenge for the championship after this we get a brief little celebration with Johnny Impact. Saban kind of selling the fact that he couldn't get the job done. No matter what he tried there, he could not get the job done. But uh, Johnny Impact um, getting the victory and proving that he was deserving of it from the start. So he is going to be challenging whoever has the championship at that point in time. We'll have to see. After that, we get hype for our main event, Smojo Kurt Angle submission match. If Kurt Angle wins, he gets a shot at the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship this Thursday on Impact, and very well could be the person that Johnny Impact is going to be taking on at Bound for Glory with the championship on the line. If Samojo wins, well, then Kurt Angle doesn't get the title shot. It's as simple as that. Kurt Angle has to win to get the title shot. Otherwise, that's just really it. Um... There's nothing really on the line for Joe at all here. It's all just, all comes down to whether Kurt gets the victory or not. And the match itself gets a 77. I'll take it. I will take a 77. As in about that fantastic heat in great wrestling, a 16, little over 16 minute match. Samoa Joe gets the submission victory over Kurt Angle by submission with the Coquina Clutch after what ended up happening towards the end of the match here was Kurt Angle had Joe locked in the ankle lock after a big back, big time back and forth match. Really great matchup happening. Angle had Joe locked in the ankle lock was has Joe seemed like he was he was struggling to to break it. Um, Joe tried to get to the ropes right when right before he got to the ropes. Over Angle pulled him off, pulled him away, did the whole lay down thing where he locks his legs around the leg over to really cinch it in. Looked like Joe was getting close to tapping out. EC three comes from out of nowhere, attacks the hell out of Kurt Angle. Um, despite what Magnus has said earlier in the night, there is no disqualifications in the submission match, so. There wasn't a submission or any disqualification there. EC3 attacks Kurt Angle. Um, Kurt Angle goes after EC3, lays him out with an ankle slam, and uh, Joe's able to lock in the Coquina clutch when Angle's not paying attention and get him to pass out in it. So Kurt Angle does not get the shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship this this Thursday at Impact. Joe was able to get the job done tonight and able to save Magnus, so to speak, prevent him from having to defend the title against Kurt Angle. 77 rating, 71 from Joe, 76 from Angle, who seemed off his game. I'll take it, though. I'll take a 77. After the match, though, after the match, something happens. EC3 is celebrating 
about the fact that he helped make sure that Kurt Angle did not get the title shot. He's going to make his aunt proud. He's going to make Magnus proud. He's going to make everybody proud. Because he knows how everybody was disappointed in him failing to have any sort of success in the Bound of Glory series. And then, of course, failing earlier in the night against Team 3D. So he's celebrating about this fact. Joe's recovering. Angle's just stole, passed out on the map. Joe looks at Angle. Looks at EC3. Looks uh, annoyed by EC3's help in the match. Grabs a mic and he says, I had this in the bag. If you thought I was going to tap to that ankle lock, you're sadly mistaken. I had this in the bag. But you, Magnus, you couldn't let me end it. No, you had to get one of your cronies involved. You had to get this boy involved. Well, you know what, Magnus? This Thursday, you were supposed to defend the title against Kurt Angle if Kurt failed to get the victory. But the way I see it, this was a number one contendership match for this Thursday. I hope you're ready to shine that belt up really nicely and get ready to have it pried from your limp unconscious fingers because I'm ca- I'm challenging for the belt this Thursday on Impact and there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. After all, I'm the number one contender for the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship, remember? And just smirks, drops the mic, and, wa- and leaves. So we see EC3 just completely in shock about what just happened. The crowd's going crazy. Angle's still selling on the ramp, or on the mat, in the mat. And we're our lasting image of no surrender is Joe walking up the ramp with a smirk on his face as this coming Thursday on impact, it will be Magnus having to defend the TNA world's heavyweight championship against the guy he thought he had in his corner, Samoa Joe. That's going to be a hell of a matchup this Thursday. This gets a 65 rating though. And the show overall itself gets a 76. I will take it. I don't like all these restrictions, but to be fair, I haven't reworked the pay-per-view broadcasters yet. So it's going to be some some issues, but I will take it. I will take that for sure. As it turns out, the tag team match actually was a show sealer because it did better than even the main event. (laughs) So there's that. Um, although, to be fair, I think Impact and Sabin probably would have done an 80 as well if the uh, if they didn't have uh, bad chemistry with each other. I feel like they probably would have gotten close, really close to an 80, if not hit an 80, um, just because they're both really good in-ring competitors and, and all that. But I'll take the 76. I'm not going to complain about it. I will take it. I'm not going to complain as no surrender is now in the books. And we have a, we know our number one contender for the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship at Bound for Glory as we have the 2014 Bound for Glory Series winner, Johnny Impact, with the ticket to the main event. But we don't know who the champion is going to be heading into that show because this Thursday we've got Magnus having to defend the title against Samoa Joe. Either one of those people against Johnny Impact will be a good matchup. But it's going to be interesting to see. It's really going to be interesting to see. On top of that, uh, all the other championships that were on the line tonight were retained. So, barring some crazy title change happening between now and Bound for Glory, the Wolves, DJZ, Mickey James, all defending their belts at at Bound for Glory, we'll have to see who ends up challenging for all of those. We're going to have to see how everything else goes when it comes to Abyss and Jeff Hardy, when it comes to uh, Christopher Daniels and whether he ends up working well with Black Friday management or not. A lot of uncertainties to be had as we are officially now on the road for Bound for, uh, Bound for Glory. It's going to be one hell of a show, 
and I am going to be looking forward to it for sure. But before we get there, we've got a few weeks of impacts to go. And that is the next time we're going to see you guys in this series. So thank you for watching.